Jason and hope you are okay today uh, it's good to be with you and we're making some videos on Christian Martyrs and I hope this is a blessing to you and encouragement to you so let's come before the Lord Lord Jesus Christ we thank you for your love and your grace and your care we thank you for your blessings and we thank you for your goodness and we thank you Lord that you are our God and our Savior today and we give you the prayers and glory that you are the same God yesterday today and forever and so Father we praise you and thank you for this day and we pray that you bless us now in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and for your glory Lord Amen it's good to be with you today and we are looking at Christian Martyrs and um, we're looking at the book of Fox's Book of Martyrs chapter 1 and Fox's Book of Martyrs in chapter 1 he says the history of the church may also be said to be a history of the trials and sufferings of its members as experience at the hands of wicked men at one time persecution as waged against the friends of Christ was confirmed to those without at another schisms and divisions of a raid um, brethren of the same name against each other in scenes of uh, scenes of cruelty and woe have exhibited within the sanctuary reviling in horror the direst cruelties over ever inflicted by pagan or barbarian fanaticism this however instead of implying any defect in the gospel system which breathes peace and love only portrays a darker colors the deep universal depravity of the human heart pure and unsophisticated morality especially when attempted to be inculcated on mankind essential to the preserving an interest with the creator have constantly met with opposition it was this which produced the premature death of John the Baptist it was the cutting charge of adultery and incest which excited and the resentment of Herodias who never ceased to persecute him until she had accomplished his destruction. The same observation is equally applicable to the Jewish doctors in the treatment of our blessed Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. In the sudden martyrdom of John the Baptist and the crucifixion of our Lord, the history of Christian martyrdom must be admitted to commence. From these, as a basis of the subsequent occurrences, we may fairly trace the origin of that hostility. Um, St. Stephen suffered the next in order his death was occasioned by the faithful manner in which he preached the gospel to the betrayers and murderers of Christ to so such a degree of madness were they excited that they cast him out of the city and stoned him to death the time when he suffered is generally supposed to have been the Passover which succeeded to that of our Lord's crucifixion and to the era of his extension and the following spring upon this great persecution which raised against all who professed their belief in Christ as the Messiah or as a prophet we are immediately told by St. Luke that there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem and that they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria Philip was born at Bethsaida in Galilee and was first called by the name of disciple he labored diligently in Upper Asia and suffered martyrdom at Helopolis in Phrygia. he was scourged thrown into prison and afterwards crucified AD 54 Andrew was the brother of Peter he preached the gospel to many Asiatic nations but on his arrival at Edessa he was taken and crucified on a cross the two ends of which were fixed traversely in the ground and hence the derivation of them um, St. Andrew's Cross St. Mark was born in Jewish parents of the tribe of Levi he is supposed to have been converted to Christianity by Peter who he served as an uh, amanuensis under whose inspection he wrote his gospel in the Greek language Mark was dragged to pieces by the people of Alexandria at the great solemnity of Serapis the idol ending his life under their merciless hands uh, Peter was born in Bethsaida in Galilee he was the occupation of fishermen 
Christ gave them the name in Syriac in plains of rock. Peter is supposed to have suffered martyrdom at Rome during the reign of Nero, being crucified with his head downward on his request. It's however, very uncertain whether Peter ever visited Rome at all, the evidence rather favouring the supposition that he ended his days in some other country. The Jude, the brother of James, was commonly called Thaddeus. He was crucified at Edessa, AD 72. Bartholomew preached in several countries and having translated the Gospel of Matthew into the language of India, he propagated in that country. He was at length cruelly beaten and then crucified by the impatient idolaters. Thomas called Didymus preached the Gospel in Perthia, Parthia and India were exciting. The rage of the pagan priests who was martyred by being thrust through with a spear. Luke the Evangelist was the author of the gospel which gone under his name. He travelled with Paul through various countries and is supposed to have been hanged on an olive tree by the idolatrous priests of Greece. Simon, surnamed Zealot, preached the gospel of Mauritania, Africa and even Brittany, Brittany, which later country he was crucified, AD 74. John, the beloved disciple, was brother to James the Great. The churches of Samaria Pergamus, Sardinia, Philippi, Laodicea, Laodicea, and Thyatira were founded by him from Ephesus. He was ordered to be sent to Rome, where it is affirmed he was cast into a cauldron of boiling oil. He escaped by miracle without injury. Domitian afterwards banished him to the Isle of Patmos. That's John. He was the only apostle who escaped a violent death. Barnabas was Cyprus, of Cyprus, but of Jewish descent. His death is supposed to have taken place about AD 73. So that's uh, the first part of Fox's Book of Martyrs. And uh, we're going to look now at the next chapter. Hi, uh, this is Jason. Uh, we're looking at Fox's Butter Book of Martyrs and we're looking at part two. And we're looking at uh, the first persecutions under Nero, AD 67. The first persecutions of the church took place in the year 67 under Nero, the sixth emperor of Rome. This monarch reigned for the space of five years with terrible credit to himself but then gave way to the greatest extravagancy of temper and to the most atrocious barbarities. Among other di diabolical whims, he ordered that the city of Rome should be set on fire, which order was executed by his officers and guards and servants. While the imperial city was in flames, he went up to the Tower of Martians, played upon the harp, sung the song of the burning of Troy, and openly declared that he reached the ruin of all things before his death. Beside the noble pile called the circus, many other palaces and houses were consumed. Several thousand perished in the flames, were smothered in the smoke, or buried beneath the ruins. The dreadful configuration continued nine days when Nero, finding that his conduct was greatly blamed, and severe odium cast upon him, determined to lay the whole upon the Christians at once to execute himself and have an opportunity of gluttoning his sight with new cruelties. This was the occasion of the first persecution, and the barbarities exercised on the Christians were such as even exercised in the commiseration of the Romans themselves. Nero even refined upon cruelty and contrived all manner of punishments for the Christians that the most internal imagination could design. In particular, he had some pseudo in the skins of wild beasts and then worried by dogs till they expired and others dressed in shirts made stiff with wax fixed axle tresses and set on fire in his garden in order to illuminate them. Persecution was general throughout the whole Roman Empire but it rather increased than diminished the spirit of Christianity. The course of St. Paul and St. Peter were martyred. Uh, the Emperor Domitian, who was naturally the second persecution under Domitian in AD 81. <coughs> the Emperor Domitian, who was naturally inclined to cruelty, 
first slew his brother and then raised the second persecution against the Christians. In his rage he put to death some of the Roman senators, some through malice and others to confiscate their estate. He then commanded all the lineage of David to be put to death. Among the numerous martyrs that suffered during this persecution were Simon, Bishop of Jerusalem, without renouncing his religion. A variety of fabricated tales were during this reign composed in order to injure the Christians. Such was the infatuation of the pagans that if famine, pestilence or earthquake afflicted any of the Roman province, it was laid upon the Christians. These persecutions among the Christians increased the number of informer, informers and many, for the sake of gain, swore away the lives of the innocent. Another hardship was that when any Christians were brought before the magistrate, a test oath was proposed, when if they refused to take it, death was pronounced against them, and if they confessed themselves Christians, the sentence was the same. Pon um, Nicodemus, a benevolent Christian of some distinction, suffered at Rome during the rage of Domitian persecution. Potassius and Gervius were martyred at Milan. Timothy was the celebrated disciple of St. Paul and Bishop of Ephesus, where he zealously governed the church till AD 97. At this period, as the pagans were about to celebrate the feast called the Catagonian, Timothy meeting the procession severely reproved them for their ridiculous idolatry, which so exasperated the people that they fell upon him with their clubs and beat him so dreadful a manner that he expired of the bruises two days afterwards. The Persecution Under Trajan AD 108. Nerva, succeeding Domitian, gave a, a respite to the sufferings of the Christians, but beginning reigning only 13 months, his successor Trajan in the 10th year of his reign, AD 108, began the third persecution against the Christians. While the persecution ranged, Pliny, a heathen philosopher, wrote to the emperor in favor of the Christians, to whose epistle Trajan returned in this inclusive, indecisive act. The Christians ought not to be sought after, but when brought before the magistrate, they should be punished. Trajan, however, soon afterwards wrote to Jerusalem and gave orders to his officers to exterminate the stock of David, in consequence of which all that could be found of the race were put to death. Phocius, bishop of Pontus, refusing a sacrifice to Neptune, was by the immediate order of Trajan cast first into a hot lime kiln and then thrown into school in bath until he expired. Trajan likewise commanded the martyrdom of Ignatius, Bishop of Antioch. The holy man was the person of whom, when an infant Christ took, it, took into his arms and showed to his disciples as one that would be a partner of humility and in innocence. He received the gospel afterwards from St. John the Evangelist and was exceedingly zealous in his mission. He boldly vindicated the faith of Christ before the emperor for which he was cast into prison and tormented in most cruel manner after being dreadfully scourged he was compelled to hold fire in his hands at the same time papers clipped clipped in oil were put to his sides and set on fire his flesh was then torn with red hot pincers and at last he was dispatched by being torn to pieces by wild beasts <sighs> wow Trajan being succeeded by Adrian, the later continued this third persecution with as much severity as his predecessor. About this time, Alexander, Bishop of Rome, with his two deacons, were martyred as were Quirinius and Hernes, with their family, Zeno, a Roman nobleman, and about 10,000 other Christians. That's at the martyrdom of Fastines and Jovinus, brothers, citizens of Bessinica, their torments were so many, their patience so great, that Coleserus, a pagan beholding them, was struck with admiration and exclaimed in a kind of ecstasy, Great is the God of the Christians, for which he was offended and suffered a similar, similar, similar fate. Many other similar cruelties and rigors were exercised against the Christians until Quadratus, bishop of Athens, made a learned apology in their favor before the emperor who happened to be there at, and Astrides, a philosopher 
of the same city wrote an elegant epistle which caused Adrian to relax his severities and relent in their favour. Adrian dying in AD 138 was succeeded by Antonius Pius, one of the most amiable monarchs that ever reigned and who stayed the persecution against the Christians. The fourth persecution under Marcus Aurelius Antonius, philosophers, a strong pagan. The cruelties used in this persecution were such that many of the spectators shuddered with horror at the sight and were astonished at the intrepidity of the sufferers. Some of the martyrs were obliged to pass with their already wounded feet over thorns, nails, sharp shells, and upon their points others were scourged till their sinews and veins lay bare, and after suffering the most excruciating torture that could be devised, they were destroyed by the most terrible deaths. Germanicus, a young man, but a true Christian, being delivered to the wild beasts on account of his faith, behaved with such, a, such astonishing courage that several pagans began became converts to a faith which inspired such fortitude. Polycarp, the venerable bishop of Samaria, hearing that persecutions were seeking after him, persecutors were seeking after him escape, but when but he was discovered by a child after feasting the guards who apprehended him, he desired an hour in prayer, which being allowed he prayed with fervency that his guards repented that they had been instrumental in taking him. He was, however, kept before the proconsul and burnt in the marketplace. Twelve other Christians who had been intimate with Polycarp were soon after martyred. The circumstances attending the execution of this venerable old man, as they were of no common nature, so it would be injurious to the credit of our profession, professed history of martyrdom, to pass over them in silence. It was observed by the spectators that after finishing his prayer at the stake, to which he was only tired but not nailed as usual, as he assured them he should attain immovable, the flames on the kindling the faggots and encircled his body and like an arch without touching him and the executioner on seeing this was ordered to pierce him with a sword when so great a quantity of blood flowed out extinguished the fire but his body at the instigation of the enemies of the gospel especially Jews was ordered to be consumed in the pile and the request of his friend who wished to give it to Christians rejected, they nevertheless collected its bones and as much of its remains as possible and caused them to be decently, decently in turn. Metrodorus, a minister who persecuted boldly, Pionius, who made some excellent apologies for the Christian faith, were likewise burnt. Carpus and Papelius, two worthy Christians, and Agathonia, a pious woman, suffered martyrdom uh, at Pergamalius in Asia. Felicitius, an illustrious Roman lady of considerable family and the most shining, virtues was a devout, shining virtue was a devout Christian. She had several son, sons whom she had educated with the most exemplary piety. Just lost my place, uh, I'm just trying to find it. The principal of these martyrs were Vetius Agathus, a young man, Plandinia, a Christian lady of weak constitution, Sancticus, a deacon of Vienna, uh, Vienna, red hot plates of brass were placed upon the tenderest parts of his body, Publius, a weak woman, once an apostate, Atalus, a Pergamus, Apotheus, were venerable, the venerable bishop of Lyons, who was 90 years of age.
Hi folks, this is Jay. Are you okay today? It's good to see you. <sighs> Hope everybody's okay. Uh, we're looking at, um, you got to see uh, Jason there, his face. I've just been reading uh, this book. I'm just drinking uh, uh, some Coke. It's in the evening and uh, excuse me just got a dry mouth we're continuing our reading of the Fox's Book of Martyrs uh, chapter 2 he writes uh, after Gordian's death in the reign of Decius the Emperor came to Antioch where having a dis and then ordered him to sacrifice to pagan deities as an expiation as an expiation for his offence this being refused he was committed to prison loaded with chains treated with great severities, severities and then beheaded together with these young men who had been his pupil 251 AD in the year of our Lord 251 the Emperor Decius having erected a pagan temple at Ephesus he commanded all who were in that city to sacrifice to the idols this order was nobly refused by seven of his own soldiers Maximus, Martinus, Joannes, Malchus, Dionysius, a Syrian and Const uh, Constantinus the Emperor wishing to win these soldiers to renounce their faith by his entreaties and lenity gave them a considerable respite till he returned from an ex during the Emperor since they escaped and hid themselves in a cavern which the Emperor being informed of at this return the mouth of the cave was closed up and they all perished with hunger Theodora a beautiful young lady of Antioch and refusing to sacrifice to the Roman idols was condemned to the stews that her virtues might be sacrificed to the brutality of lust Didymus a Christian disguised himself in the habit of Roman soldier went to the house informed Theodora who he was an advisor to make her escape in his clothes this being effected and a man found in the brothel instead of a beautiful lady Didymus was taken before the president to whom confessing the truth and knowing that he was a Christian the sentence of death was immediately pronounced against him Theodora hearing her delivery was likely to suffer came to the judge threw herself at his feet and begged that the sentence might fall on her as the guilty person but deaf to the cries of the innocent Verinus and Messalinius said, Where are you carrying the innocent? This interger in sorry, interrogatory occasioned them uh, to be seized, and all three, after being tortured, were handed and uh, killed. Excuse me. Origin, the celebrated presbyter and catechist of Alexandria at the age of 64 was seized thrown into a loathsome prison laden with fetters his feet placed in the stocks and his legs extended to the uttermost for several successive days he was threatened with fire and tormented by every lingering means the most infernal imagination could suggest during this cruel temporizing the Emperor Decius died and Gallus who succeeded him engaged in a war with the Goths the Christians messed with a respite in this interim Origen obtained his enlargement and retiring to Tyre, he there remained till his death, which happened when he was in the 69th year of his age. Gallus, the emperor, having concluded his war, a plague broke out in the em empire. Sacrifices to the pagan deities were ordered by the emperor, and persecution spread from the interior to the extreme parts of the empire, and they fell martyrs to the impetuosity of the rabble as well as the prejudice of the magistrate among these were Cornelius the Christian Bishop of Rome and Lucius the successor in 253 most of the errors which crept into the church at this time arose from plaguing placing human reason 
in competition with revelation, but the fallacy of such arguments being proved by the most able divines, the opinions they had created vanished away like the stars before the sun. Well, I think we'll stop there, but we've had a, a real look at a lot of the persecution in the early church. And I think it should encourage you to to not be discouraged, but continue to preach the gospel and continue to serve the Lord. And may God bless you in your service for him. Hi folks, this is Jason. Hope you're okay today. It's good to see you. We're doing uh, Christian Martyrs, the Foxes Book of Martyrs, and we're in the early persecutions of the church. And uh, we're in the fifth persecution persecution commencing with Cerevus in AD 192. Cerevus having been recovered from a severe fit of sickness by a Christian became a great favour of the Christians in general but the prejudice and fury of the ignorant multitude prevailing obsolete laws were put in execution against the Christians. The progress of Christianity alarmed the pagans and they revived the state of calumny of placing accidental misfortunes to the account of its professors AD 192. <coughs> but though the persecution malice rage, yet the gospel shone with resplendent brightness and firm <coughs> as an impenetrable rock withstood the attacks of the boisterous enemies with success. Tertullian, who lived in this age, informs us that if the Christians had collectively withdrawn themselves from the Roman territories, the empire would have been greatly depleted. <coughs> Irenaeus, Bishop of Lyons, was born in Greece and received both the poly polite and Christian education. <coughs> it is generally supposed that the account of the persecution of that Lyons was written by himself. He succeeded the martyr of Pith the Pithinius as Bishop of Lyons and ruled his diocese with great propriety. <coughs> he was a great opposer of heresies in general and about AD 187 he wrote a celebrated tract against heresy. Victor, the Bishop of Rome, wanting to impose the keeping of Easter there in preference to other places and occasions some disorders among the Christians. In particular, Irenaeus wrote him a synodical epistle in the name of Gaelic churches. The zeal in favour of Christianity pointed him out as an object of resentment to the Emperor, and in AD 202 he was beheaded. The persecutions now extended to Africa, many were martyred in that quarter of the globe, the most particular of whom we shall mention, Perpetua, a married lady of about 22 years. Those who suffered with her were Felicius, a married lady, big with child at the time of her being apprehended, and Revacatus, Cacatum of Carthage, and a slave. The name of the other prisoners destined to suffer from this occasion were Saturninus, Secundulus, and Sato. On the day appointed for their execution, they were led to the amphitheatre. Satyr, Santrinius, and Rovicatus were ordered to run the gauntlet between the hunters, or such as the care of the wild beasts. The hunters being drawn up in two ranks, they ran between and were severely lashed as they passed. Felicitus and Perpetua were stripped in order to be thrown to a mad bull, which made his first attack upon Perpetua and stunned. He then darted to Felicius and gored her dreadfully, but not killing them. The executioner did that office with a sword. Revocatus and Satur were destroyed by wild beasts. Saturninus was beheaded and Secundulus died in prison. These executions were in the year 205 on May 8th and the 8th of March. Cecilia, a young lady of good family in Rome, was married to a gentleman named Valerian, she converted her husband and brother who were beheaded and the Maximus or officer who led them to execution becoming their converts suffered the same fault. The lady was placed naked in a scolding bath having continued there a considerable time. Her head was struck off with a sword in AD 22. Callistus, Bishop of Rome, was martyred in AD 224 but the manner of his death is not recorded and Urban Bishop of Rome met the same fate AD AD 232. The sixth persecution under Maximus, AD 235. AD 235 was the time of Maximus. In Cappadocia, the president 
Ceremonius did all he could to exterminate the Christians from that province. The principal persons who perished under the reign were Pontinius, Bishop of Rome, Anteros Grecian, his successor who gave offence to the government by collecting the acts of the martyrs, Pacius uh, and Caritus, Roman senators with all their families, and many other Christians. Uh, Simplinius, Senator Calipodius, a Christian minister thrown into the Tiber, Martin, a noble, beautiful virgin, and Hippolytus, a Christian prelate, tied to wild horse and dragged into till he expired. The seventh persecution under Decius AD 249. This was occasioned partly by the hatred he bore to his predecessor Philip, who was deemed a Christian, and partly to his jealousy concerning the amazing increase of Christianity, where the heathen temples began to be forsaken and the Christian churches thronged. These reasons stim uh, stimulated Decius to attempt the very extirpation of the name of Christian, and it was unfortunate for the gospel that many errors had about this time crept into the church. The Christians were at variance with each other, self-interest divided those whom social love ought to have united, and the virulent surprise occasioned a variety of factions. The heathen in general were ambitious to enforce the imperial decrees upon the occasion, and looked upon the murder of a Christian as a merit to themselves. The martyrs upon this occasion were innumerable, but the principle we shall give some account of. Fabian, the Bishop of Rome, was the first person of eminence who felt the severity of this persecution. The deceased Emperor Philip had a, an account of his integrity, committed his treasure to the care of this good man. But Decius, not finding as much as at avarice made him expect, determined to wreak his vengeance on the good prelate. He was accordingly seized, and on the 20th of January, AD 250, he suffered decapitation. Nicomachus, uh, being brought before the pro council as a Christian, was ordered to pay Ganigals. Nicomachus replied, I cannot pay the respect to devils, which is only due to the Almighty. This speech so much enraged the pro council that Nicomachus was put to the rack. After enduring the torment for a time, he recanted, but scarcely had he given this proof of his frailty than he fell into the greatest agonies, dropped down on the ground, and expired immediately. Denisi, a young woman of only sixteen years of age, who beheld this terrible judgment, suddenly exclaimed, unhappy wretch, why would you buy a moment's ease at the expense of a miserable eternity? Optimus, hearing this, called to her, and Denisia, De avowing herself to be a Christian, she was beheaded by order soon after. Andrew and Paul, two companions of Nica. Machus, the martyr, AD 251, suffered martyrdom by stoning and expired calling on their blessed Redeemer. Alexander and Epacius of Alexander were apprehended for being Christians and confessing the accusation were beat with staves, torn with hooks and length burnt in the fire. We were informed in a fragment preserved by Eusebius that four female martyrs suffered on the same day and at the same place, but not in the same manner, for they were beheaded. Lucian and Marcion, two wicked pagans, though skillful magicians, became converts to Christianity. To make amends for their former errors, lived the lives of hermits and subsisted upon bread and water. And after some time spent in this manner, they became zealous preachers and made Many combats, the persecution, however, raging at this time, they were seized upon and carried before Sabaeus, the governor of Bithynia. Being asked why, by what authority they took upon themselves to preach, Lucian answered, the laws of charity and humanity obliged all men to ende en endeavor the conversion of their neighbor and to do everything in their power to rescue them from the snare of the devil. Lucian, having answered in this manner, Marcion said that then conversion was by the same grace which was given St. Paul before a zealous persecutor of the church became a preacher of the gospel. The pro council finding that he could not prevail with them to renounce their faith, condemned them to be burnt alive, with sentence was soon after executed. Trifor and, Ris and, Trifo and uh, Rispicius, two eminent men, were seized as Christians and imprisoned at Nice. Their feet were pierced with nails, were dragged through the streets, scourged, torn with iron hooks, scorched with lighted torches, and at length beheaded, February AD 251. Agatha of Sicily, 
Sicilian lady was not more remarkable for her personal and acquired endowments than her piety. Her beauty was such that Quintian, governor of Sicily, became enamoured with her and made many attempts upon her chastity without success. In, in order to gratify his passions with the greater co conveniency, he put the virtuous lady into the hands of Aphrodisia, a very infamous and licentious woman. This wretch tried every artifice to win her to the desired prostitution, but found all her efforts were in vain, for her chastity was impregnable, and she well knew the virtue alone would procure true happiness. A prophetica acquainted Quintinia with the inefficiency of her endeavours, who enraged to be foiled in his design, changed his lust into resentment. On a confessing that she was a Christian, he determined to gratify his revenge as he could not his passion. Pursuant to his orders, she was scourged, burnt with red hot iron, and torn with sharp hooks. Having borne these torments with admirable fortitude, she was next laid naked upon live coals, intermingled with glass, and then being carried back to prison, she expired on the 5th of February. 2518. I'm nearly in tears. I'm absolutely nearly in tears at this. This is just amazing. Cyril, Bishop of Grotaia, was seized by order of Lucia, the governor of that place, who never exhort, exhorted him to obey the imperial mandate. Performed the sacrifices and save his vulnerable, per, vulnerable person from the destruction, for he was now 84 years of age. The good prelate replied that as he had long taught others to serve the souls, he should only think now of his own salvation. The word the prelate heard his sentence without emotion, walked cheerfully to the place of execution, and underwent his martyrdom with great fortitude. The persecution raged in no place more than the island of Crete, for the governor being exceedingly active in executing the imperial decrees that place streamed with precious blood, pious blood. Babylus, a Christian of liberal education, became bishop of Antioch in AD 237. On the demise of Zebinus, he acted within inimitable zeal and governed the church with honourable prudence during the most tempestuous times. The first misfortunes that happened at Antioch during his mission was the siege by Sapo, king of Persia, who having overrun all Syria took the plunder, the city among others, and used the Christian inhabitants with greater severity than the rest, but was soon totally defeated by Gordian. I'm going to just take a break for a few minutes. Uh, and, uh, come back, but I can see it's very, very powerful. Uh, I'm just so moved by listening to these martyrs, and I hope it's an encouragement to you as it is to me.